Hey, this is Notzer, and once again, we're doing a World of Warship video. This time, we're taking a look at Tinjin. Tinjin is a new addition to World of Warships as of February 5th, I say, uh, or so. I think that's when the patch came out. Uh, but it was, it was added with the patch, and it is a random loot bundle from the Armory, I believe. I can show you how to access it if you are interested. Yeah, exactly. It, it's a random chance, 1 out of 54 to have Tinjin be the ship that you could unlock. Uh, Tinjin is a take on the Riga. The Riga is the tier nine Soviet heavy cruiser that specializes with uh, 220 millimeter guns that are AP driven. Can of course load HE, but it's mostly for that AP. And then you also get radar as an option on the Riga. For Tinjin, you substitute radar for a unique equipment that was introduced with the Bungo branch. This of course is the high precision spotter. When you're making use of this spotter, it will it will improve your gun accuracy. So that's a really nice benefit. And it also obviously extend the gun range a little bit. And it's a very frequent off of cooldown ability. So it's very useful in many different situations. For example, broadside cruiser, load AP. A bow in target, maybe load HE and use high precision to land a couple fires. Are you going after a enemy submarine or a destroyer? Well, this is going to help tighten your grouping. So maybe you could potentially alpha them out at a more effective way. I really like this with the Bungo and I actually like it on the Tinjin. But the question is always, is it worth one out of 54 chance to unlock it. Well, of course not. Don't get, don't spend all of your doubloons to unlock it. It really is just a Riga with a slightly different play style. But if you were to happen to get a random, you know, within the first three to five and you were already doing something with the Lunar New Year uh, containers, then yeah, it's a good option and one that can be fun to play. Uh, now, obviously, this doesn't have radar, so you don't need to extend the duration of radar. So you can choose to play it maybe more tanky overall than what the Riga would be in your arsenal if you have both. The hull, of course, is the similar hull that you expect. It's got that citadel that's above the waterline, just like the Riga. So any broadside against a battleship or even a heavy cruiser of equal power will easily punch right through and citadel you. And actually in the game that I'm going to showcase, I make a mistake and that's exactly what happens. But from a bow in position, the only area that you can really punish is the top of the bow and the superstructure. It's very well armored from the anti-battleship role because 40 millimeter stops Yamato and everything under it, of course. Uh, if you can locate your shells right here, you can penetrate through it. But at an extended range, that's an increasingly hard target to hit. Uh, so for the equipment, I choose to go more of like a tanky build than the recommended. It thinks that you need engine room protection. I haven't really seen a need for that. Of course, go gun accuracy. Uh, I choose steering gears. They expect maybe a bow in position, but you don't have radar. So you're not really going in, bow in, sitting there, just absorbing damage. You can't really do that, especially the way that the game is played these days. So I don't really necessarily agree that Propulsion Mod 1 is the way to go. I would prefer a little bit more active maneuvering and steering gears, of course, enables that. Concealment goes without saying, and then rate of fire. Now the rate of fire will slow the turret traverse slightly, but you can compensate with your build. The only consumable choice that's offered is Defensive AA versus Hydroacoustic Search. Neither one of them is spectacular, but I would probably go with Hydroacoustic Search just because it helps more universally and it's nice to avoid torpedoes because you already do take a lot of damage, you really do, from incoming fire. Uh, your base torpedo protection is 19%. Same amount of hit points as you would expect on the Riga. The heal is, I don't believe the heal 
Okay, the heal seems to be slightly improved. Just slightly, ever so slightly. Almost not recognizable, the improvement. Obviously, high precision spotter. The Bungo branch made this popular and created this consumable that they now will load into other ships like Tinjin. It works well. I like it. I'll showcase how it works in a match. Everything else is pretty standard fare. If you've played the Riga or played against it, that's exactly what you're expecting here with equipment changes. Uh, now for the commander build, I have taken everything that has been recommended to me except for gun feeder. I really like incoming fire alert for cruisers. It throws off shots and it generates more potential damage that you can absorb. It's a win-win to me. It's the best one point for a cruiser. Cruisers obviously have really big citadels and this one is no exception. So you don't want to take damage. So I just think this helps way more than they're giving credit for in the recommendations. Other abilities that are recommended. Faster turrets. The eye in the sky. This is really nice. It, it synergizes really nicely with this. And uh, I have never run out of spotting aircraft, but admittedly, I haven't gone a full 20 minute battle in the Tinjin. Enhanced AP damage. It is the Soviet gun, so the AP is worth investing points into. Concealment. It's a cruiser. Why not? Uh, adrenaline rush. Why not? It is a cruiser. So the more consumables that you get, there's more value with superintendent. And then the final one, top grade gunner. Uh, this will enhance my reload further and secondary battery. Not really something that I would consider. It just doesn't have the range. And if anything's within 7.3 kilometers of your ship, you better be killing it quickly because it might kill you. Uh, but overall, I feel like it plays really nicely. Uh, my sort of universal cruiser build that I've gone in the past where I might sub this for radio location and I might sub heavy AP. I don't really see a need to do that. It plays back and it has good gun velocity, so it can afford to stay really far back and still affect the match. Whereas a slower gun velocity ship like, say, Des Moines cannot afford that, that type of playstyle. But with the extra distance, it really allows you to manage your health pool pretty well. And I haven't really had any complaints when playing it like that. Now, showing too much side and being within... 12 to 15 kilometers of really big guns. That's a, a dicey proposition on the Riga, and it's definitely dicey on Tinjin. Uh, for the equipment that comes with it, the default permanent camouflage is like, um, I guess, a gradient blue. It, I don't have any, it's not offensive to me. I don't think it's worth like the camo that's equipped to it because it's, it's just a blue, uh, but it, it looks appropriate enough and it's going to work for me. I don't actually know where you change the default flag for Pan Asians anymore. So I don't know. Oh, here. Yeah, it is from China. So yes, this is a Chinese. It's tr probably a Chinese copy or uh, the Soviet Union sold the Riga class to China and this is what they've built out of it whatever fictional reason or excuse for this existing you can fill it in for yourself uh, but we're going to take this ship out and showcase the high precision and i just want it to show up high precision spotter on a cruiser and hopefully it works out all right so this is the matchup that we got for our tingen game we've got a tier 8 aircraft carrier four enemy battleships three cruisers three destroyers, and then one submarine. So a little bit of everything. Not not super offensive. You know, it's not like two submarines and two carriers and like a token cruiser. This is a nice mix of all the classes that you would normally expect to face, and uh, hopefully the game showcases that well. So Tinjin. It's a province in China, and now it is a heavy cruiser in World War Warships. Based off of the Riga, has all the Riga issues that are well documented, but it does have a little bit of a, a different play style. It's got 
almost two kilometers extended range. And then on top of that, high precision gives you even, even more distance. So honestly, it doesn't play like the Riga and you're not looking to radar like the Riga. Now on this flank, we've got a gearing and a Yamato and that's it. My teammates generally spawned in the center and uh, we'll see where they deploy. The token submarine on my team spawned center, so I would assume that the enemy submarine also spawned center. Now we have an enemy aircraft carrier that's coming in. Note the air detection. The air detection is one to one with my seven kilometer range. Um, well, I guess the air detection is not one to one with my AA, but it's it's nearly one to one. And we're just going to try and sail in this open water near A point. Hopefully the gearing can provide spotting and we can provide our superior gun velocity to affect any enemy that might come this way. Obviously, you should expect a, an enemy destroyer on the same flank as your DD. So there's at least one person and yep, someone is contesting a point. Obviously, we don't have a spot on them. But maybe our ghost round will. Now I am, ooh, huh, interesting. So the submarine looks like it spawned on the western half of this. I open up with my high explosive, and unfortunately he actually dives below. But we've got a cruiser that's broadside. How frequent does this actually occur? So he switched to AP rapidly, of course. And he's not really changing his angling. I think he's being greedy against the gearing. Activate high precision. You really only need to activate high precision immediately before you fire your gun. And we get two citadels, five penetrating shells, and an enemy submarine wants to attack us. But we don't have the range to affect him with our anti-submarine just yet. But thankfully, the Mogami softens his angle against our follow-up salvo, and we burst him out of that game immediately. We did his full life in two salvos, and huge mistake by him, obviously. You can't show broadside against a heavy cruiser like Tinjin, but we're able to successfully disengage from the enemy submarine. So, you know, our play wasn't punished in any, any meaningful way. The friendly gearing obviously retreated from the submarine. And I am also aware that the submarine could very well be coming towards me. So I don't want to be too, too far forward. I do have hydro up. I'm trying to make use of Hydro more frequently. Oh, he throws out a little. And notice the range of his ping, his sonar ping, actually stopped short. So what that means is he's right at the, the edge of his range on his torpedoes. His homing torpedoes, specifically. So he's not moved up as far as I expected him to. It seems that... When he sent out his initial sonar, he decided to turn back towards his team. That's okay. While that's happening, we can easily focus on enemy battleships or heavy cruisers that are in the background. We've got more than enough gun velocity. And I really like the high precision. It's good for setting up AP, of course, but it's also good for setting up fire. That's one of the issues that holds back the Riga with HE. It, it, it's very inconsistent. And in order to make it more consistent, you kind of just have to drive up to the opponent in the Riga. Well, you don't have to do that in the Tinjin. The Tinjin can very easily activate high precision and it comes off a cooldown quite frequently. This enemy Kansas, he's just in a bad spot. He finally opens up his angle but he's basically a salvo away from dying, so I'm not gonna worry about switching to AP. Friendlies take out the enemy Kansas. Enemy aircraft carrier is attacking us. We're gonna be sailing away from him. Obviously, priority. And unfortunately, of course, the enemy destroyer, I think. Yeah, enemy destroyer, his torpedoes come towards my ship right as Hydro's to uh, be on cooldown so I'm just over here like yeah great perfect time if I would have hydroed maybe 10 or 15 seconds later than I did 
I would have seen those torpedoes and been able to react. We take a big amount of damage, but we do inflict a little bit back on the enemy in multiple ways. We actually land our anti-submarine, trying to AP out the enemy battleship. Looks like he might die before our salvo. Yeah, he's just going to burn down. That's okay. This flank's being dominated by our team, and that's wonderful. The enemy submarine has moved up aggressively. I don't know why he chose to do that against a battleship, for example, like the Minnesota or Nebraska or anyone else, Yamato. They all have range to affect the submarine, so he's really putting himself at a disadvantage by coming up so far forward towards the other battleships on my team. This golden lion is trying to island camp. He's got, he's being spotted by the friendly submarine. So I'm just trying to chip away at his health while we move forward towards a point. Now I activate hydroacoustic aggressively. I, I do that because the pace of this game seems to be fast. So I don't think I'm going to survive or the game will continue long enough that I would need to be conservative on my consumable usage. By activating Hydro in this situation, I can spot for the gearing, I can spot for the Minnesota or the Amato, so they should be able to have a good understanding of what they need to do to keep their health up. Enemy Shima shows up for a split second, and literally in that split second we fire our gun. Now we only chip once and we don't set fire, so... Shima's not going to worry. Enemy submarine is at periscope depth. The Hipper's uh, hydroacoustic spots him out. And he dives. I don't have range. Only 7 kilometers on my airdrop depth charges. But it's good enough that I can keep him back if I want to. Friendly gearing's going to cap A point for our team. The enemy team's already capped C point, And the remaining forces are crashing down on my team. Enemy aircraft carrier is doing a good job of focusing on the hipper. Golden Lion is very low, and Golden Lion actually floods out. So effectively, there's only a Shima and a Shima, because the enemy submarine did get wiped out. So there's a Shima on this flank, and I have Hydro up for another 10 seconds, so I figure I can sail towards the smoke, maybe get a token spot on him if he's there. But of course, enemy pushing up rapidly, but getting wiped out rapidly as well. Enemy Ohio and enemy Schultz. I don't really like firing on the Ohio just because it's a giant battleship and my AP is not going to do the best. Any slight angle that he might have, it's just going to kind of bounce harmlessly if it hits anything other than the super. So I would really like it if he would just show perfect broadside so I could do full damage. I mean, my high precision's back up off a of cooldown. It's ready to go. But of course, that's not what he's gonna do. So we're gonna fire off the last of our AP, switch over to our HE, and we're gonna try to damage either Schultz or Ohio. Since I have to fire a HE, I figure Firing HE at a destroyer is more valuable than firing that same HE at the Ohio. And of course it is, and we get a really good amount of damage. And one thing that's nice about Tingen is that high gun velocity. It's very easy to affect any DD at range. Far better than almost any other cruiser at this tier. I had multiple games while I was going up against a Delny or a Kaba. You know, fast moving, hard to hit destroyers and they're just a real B on something like American but with this Soviet gun velocity no problemo and that Schultz he just parked it right under him easy kill and all we got is the Ohio here because the Shima last known position is over by B point the enemy aircraft carrier of course is su super far away so we just have to affect this guy with HE and that's totally cool if he chooses to fire on us, though, we do need to angle because the Citadel is above the waterline and we are a perfect broadside. But it seems like he's distracted by the lower health Yamato. 
Eh, it's his funeral if he wants to go after a bow and Yamato versus a broadside cruiser. I'm now complaining, of course. Enemy Shimakaze is going to capture B-point. And we're doing pretty decent damage, all things considered. I mean, you know, we've got fire set. We're able to knock out DDs rather effectively. Above average, I would say. High precision also affects that matchup too, and it's really nice for that. But it's also going to affect my ability to land HE or set fires to the target. Enemy Ohio is very, very unhealthy. Looks like he's going to do one last rapid dive to uh, angle against the Yamato, so I, I aggressively switch to AP, hoping that I can fire on his broadside and just instantly knock him out. Friendlies land a couple chip damage on him. He's got his heel going, and the friendly Yamato punches his AP right through that bow, knocks out the enemy Ohio, and all that's left near me is the Shima. The enemy aircraft carrier is getting focused down by the gearing, the Minnesota, Friedrich der Grossa, even the aircraft carrier. Gearing knocks him out. And all that's left is this little puny little Shima. It was a really awesome game, actually. We didn't sustain a lot of damage. I have played games where I've tanked over a million or two million potential damage. That does require staying near max range. But at near max range, your gun velocity is your advantage. So you would expect to play at near max range on something like Tinjin. Yamato is spotted by the Shima. There's nothing that I can really do to spot him out. Maybe the friendly aircraft carrier can spot the Shima. And we, of course, spot the smoke billowing, which he has decided to activate because he's under friendly aircraft that are spotting him. And he's just going to camp in the smoke, I'm sure. Maybe he'll pop out once he sees the aircraft or out of the area or on the opposite side of the smoke. So my guns are ready to go. I'm ready to activate high precision. You don't need to have like high precision on for the reload. High precision instantly activates when you activate it. So I get that 10%. So of course we're going to lead the Shima as he's escaping the smoke. We get decent damage. We incapacitate his steering. Most likely he has last stand though. Just activate token hydro just to make sure we're okay. And we finish off the Shima. Three kill game. Not bad. I uh, like the way it ended up playing. And, uh, you know, Tinjin, it's not it's not bad ship at all. We did 116,000 damage, three kills. And, uh, yeah, played really nicely. Our team did a decent job. Yamato, Harugamo, all those guys. It was uh, the Golden Lion that actually farmed the most on the enemy. And uh, most of our damage was a split between HE and AP. And I think that's just due to the range. When you fight at these ranges, it's harder to guarantee AP is going to be successful. But with high precision, you have a better chance of landing fire and HE compared to the Riga, which is the most apt comparison to this ship. But anyway, tell me what you think of it. Please like the video if you like it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on the next one.